doesn't like earning dividends? I remember when I first started investing, my first dividend was 21 cents. And that felt so good. I felt like I was on top of the world, even though it was 21 cents, because I did not have to work for that. My money was working for me, and it provided me 21 cents that I did not work for. I was not working for my money. It was working for me. And so a lot of people try to cherry pick individual companies in order to, you know, make some dividends. They try to pick companies that pay high dividends. But what if I told you there's a way to safely be in a fund that pays you a good dividend, provides you good, good growth and diversity? Well, there is something out there, and it's my favorite dividend ETF, and that's SCHD. And this is what we're going to be covering today because this fund to me is just a very easy way to set it and forget it. Because when you're investing in individual companies, you have to constantly be looking at them to make sure they're going in the right path. And just because a company pays a high dividend doesn't mean it's a good investment. If you look at AT&T over the last five years, you've lost money despite earning a very healthy dividend. And so with a, a fund like SCHD, someone else is passively managing it and re, you know, allocating and just doing, making sure the, the best of the best uh, companies are in there. And that pays off. You don't have to do a thing. You can just set it and forget it. And that's a very good feeling. And so today we're going to cover everything SCHD and why it's one of my favorite. So let's start with, well, what is SCHD? Well, this tracks the total return of the Dow Jones U.S. Dividend 100 Index, and it's de uh, designed to measure the performance of high dividend yielding stocks issued by U.S. companies that have a record of consistently paying dividends selected for fundamental strength relative to their peers based on financial ratios. So again, this fund, the managers that are working on this fund are, are actively and constantly, uh, you know, when it, whenever they do adjust it, they're making sure that this is, they're selecting good companies that pay consistent dividends. And so, you know, and these companies are outperforming their peers. And so that's just something that you have to keep in mind. Uh, an ETF, some people like to put that down, say it's lazy, but it's not. It's not. It's a great way to invest because uh, who has the time? Most people don't to, to look at all these different companies in their portfolio and constantly be, having to be on top of them to make sure that you know, the fundamentals haven't changed. What, what are they doing to their peers? I mean, if you really think about it, who has the time for that? I sure don't. So let's actually do some fun. Let's compare SCHD to the S&P 500. So over the last month, we had a volatile January. The S&P 500 was down 7%. So SCHD was only down 3.41%. Look at that. It did better than the S&P 500. Okay, well, you're asking, well, that's only a month. Okay, let's go out a full year. The S&P 500 was up 17.44% during that same time period. SCHD was up 21.55%. It outperformed S&P 500. This is something that I bet nobody's looking into, but this fund is a quality fund, and we will see a lot more about it here in this video. And I just wanted to point this out because a lot of people think, if you're investing in a dividend fund instead of a, a fund that mimics the market, either the S&P or the Dow Jones or broad market, uh, you're not going to do so well. Well, look at here. This, uh, you know, SCHD ETF is really doing great. And so if we look at its top 10 companies, these are the companies that have contributed to its success. They make up 40.88% of the portfolio, and there's a total of 105 holdings. So this has Pfizer, Broadcom, Cisco, Coca-Cola, Amgen, Merck and Company, Pepsi, Verizon, IBM, and the Home Depot. You take any one of these companies, these companies have provided growth, they've provided stability, dependability, and great paying dividends. And a lot of these companies, if we cherry pick one, let's look at Coca-Cola. This company has had massive growth over its entire existence, so it's pretty saturated but that doesn't mean it can't keep growing. They recently acquired Body Armor, these energy drinks, and they're trying to become the number one energy drink out there, um, putting Gatorade in a second place. And so that to me is this company still actively trying to be on top of it and continuing to provide a lot of value for investors and its consumers. And so uh, just wanted to mention that just because these companies aren't in, you know, the top of the S&P 500 doesn't mean 
that they're skipping on growth or their futures. No, they're actively always constantly looking at it. Home Depot is another one I love. I think this one's Amazon proof. Uh, so anyways, just wanted to show you the top 10 holdings. If we keep moving down, uh, what is this fund rated at? If you look at most all ratings, it has high ratings and it's towards the top of you know the dividend ETF recommendations. So with fact set, it's an A with morning starts, five stars. Uh, and you can look at many other ratings. SEHD always comes out you know, in the top of any type of comparison. Uh, so if we look a little bit more into its distribution and expenses, its distribution yield for the trailing 12 months is 2.78%. So that's what it pays out for a dividend. But in the last month, it has fallen some. So now it pays a little over 3% of a dividend which is extremely well, that's above the market average. And you know this is one that uh, keeps growing. Recently they paid 60, almost 62 cents per share. Um, and if we look at their expense ratio, this is one of the things I love about it, it's very low, it's at a 0 0.06. Expense ratios, the higher they are, the more they're gonna eat at your growth long-term, the more your asset you know, gets bigger and bigger. So I really like uh, this, you know, these distributions and expense um, numbers here i think they're fantastic and excellent and if we look at their past dividend payouts you can see they're increasing over time so if you know you compare quarter one to quarter one quarter two to quarter two it's increasing so this fund is like the company essentially they're constantly increasing their dividends which shows the sign that it's healthy and so with all those companies in the top 10 uh, this is why i like this as well you're you know whatever you pay for today Let's say you get a you get in at a three percent dividend. That later on will be a much higher as this fund grows their dividends. Um, if we look at a little bit more, uh, you know, details into this, the top country of what the holdings in this ETF are mainly concentrated in the United States. They mainly hold large cap companies. Their top sector is financials. If you compare the uh, SCHD to the Russell 1000, you'll see in the one, three, five, ten year and life it outperforms. And so that's really uh, promising and shows the strength and the quality of this ETF. It was, you know, the inception was in 2011. It has a very healthy and large 31.3 billion in net assets. And so just again, everything so far I'm loving about this. So let's go into more detail. What about its sector exposure? Again, financials is at the high uh, end at 21.39%. Then it goes to IT, consumer staples, industrials, healthcare, and then it kind of drops down to consumer discretionary, communication services, material, and energy. What I like about this is what are the growing sectors right now? It's financials, it's IT, it's healthcare. Uh, industrials is a good one. I think that's going to benefit uh, due to the pass of the infrastructure bill. And then consumer staples is just that good, sturdy, solid sector to be in. And then materials and energy, I like that they're on the low end because they're either volatile or they're kind of low growth sectors. And so I'm very happy with the sector exposure here. I give it a pass. If we go to industry exposure, you'll see it tops out with IT services, followed by pharmaceuticals, then banks, then beverages, and then semiconductors. All of these are great sectors to be in. A lot of these are growing phenomenally. And then we go to capital markets, insurance, spe uh, specialty realty, uh, sorry, specialty re retail, communications equipment, and biotechnology. All these are more of the sturdy, uh, kind of slow growths, but more dependable and predictable. And so I do like this, how they have everything set out here. Uh, give it another pass. What about its geographic? As we said, it's mainly in North America. It has a very small percentage, 0.6 in Europe. What I like about this is when I think of U.S. companies, I think of companies that are constantly trying to grow their earnings, their profit, their cash flow, constantly looking for avenues of growth. These companies are working hard. These are the companies that we know and love and that we use every single day. And so uh, I think this is great. I don't see any issues with this. I don't think there's a reason to be in any other countries at this point, um, other than if they were to take small positions in maybe Asia, that's I think a gr potential growing market, but there still is a lot of risk there. If we keep on moving down, we have market capitalization. So a lot of the uh, holdings in this fund are large cap or giant cap. And then it goes to medium, small, and micro. A lot of people 
uh, need to keep in mind that these larger companies are large for a reason. They're successful. They're doing something right. And so I'm glad that it's kind of allocated like this and giving some exposure to the small and micro because there can be some surprise growth in certain companies, uh, but it is more risky. And then I'd like to do some comparisons. This fund versus similar funds. How does it do? So if we look at SCHD over the last 52 weeks, it's grown 22.83% but it has a very low expense ratio of 0 0.06. So over time, that will really help uh, keep your growth instead of eating away at it. If we look at CDL, it has grown uh, more at 27%, but look at that expense ratio, 0.35%. I don't like that at all. I think um, with an ETF that's passively managed, there's no reason for it to be that high. DBY, a few percentage points above at 24%, again, has an even higher uh, expense ratio at 0.38. BYM, uh, this is a Vanguard equivalent. Uh, it's it's you know it, SCHD has done better. Uh, it's only you know only by a point, but hey, that matters. And the expense ratio is the same. So you can see there, SCHD has slightly outperformed. Uh, DHS again, uh, it's only grown a little bit more, but a lot higher expense ratio. Um, if we look at HDV, it's at 18%, so it's grown less, and it has a slightly higher at 0 0.08, but still a good expense ratio, nothing to uh, hamper on there. And then if we look at this one, DGRO, I wanted to include, because it's a very popular one, I see, but SCHD has still outperformed. This one's grown 20.88%, and it has just a very slight higher expense ratio at 0 0.08. So now to kind of tie this out, let's look at a little bit more technical, yeah, some technical terms. And we're going to look at this portfolio fundamentals. Now, if we look at its efficiency score, it's very high. And that is a good thing because that means that it's delivering on its core promise to provide, you know, growth um, and companies that pay good dividends and that are superior to their peers. And so when they measure this, that's what that efficiency is saying. And so they're in the very top 100th, per, 100th percentile which is great. That means the fund is working how it should. It's providing what it says it's going to do. If we look at the tax cost ratio, you'll see this is in the 20th percentile. Don't let this worry you. Uh, it just comes with the territory. The more uh, something, the, the higher that the dividends are, the more you're going to pay in taxes. Uh, when a dividend happens, it creates a taxable event and you are considered, you know, you have earnings now that you have to pay taxes on. So this isn't a bad thing. It's actually a good thing in my eyes because that means it's paying a, a very healthy dividend. If we look at the equity uh, in those four equities that are kind of lumped together, circled in yellow, this is just saying that SHD is either a little above or below, uh, you know, and considered maybe a little bit more expensive than other similar funds. But it's a popular fund, so you you know you have to kind of be expecting that. Um, it kind of is good in you know the price to cash flow and the price to trailer earnings, but it kind of falls a little bit more expensive on the price to book and price to sell. So that's that's just saying that you're paying a little bit maybe of a premium compared to others. But to me, it's worth it. Uh, this fund is pretty awesome. So if we look at the expense ratio, both net and gross, again they're the same at 0 0.06. You look at similar in others, it's 0 0.57, 0 0.59. This, I'm telling you guys, long term, you look it up, look at some studies, the expense ratios do matter. They can take a huge chunk of profit out of your future growth. If we look at the equity, those next four for um, growth, they're, they're all growth. Uh, this shows that this does slightly better than you know similar uh, asset class. And so this is good because it's, as we saw with uh, some of the other similar funds, it is doing better. And then I'm sure if we compared it to all similar funds and asset classes, we'd really see uh, this truth right here. So that, that this thing is growing uh, better than average. So that is good as well. Its net assets are very well. Again, they're a huge 31.28 billion. Um, so that to me just provides the safety. And so, yeah, so there we have um, SCHD. This is, you know, just really a fund that, I love and I advocate for for others to consider and hold because it's got quality. There are some others out there that can pay a higher dividend, but there's you know not that many. And when you factor in the quality, uh, SCHD can't be beat in my opinion. This thing, um, 
when it comes to dividends, if you're going to choose an ETF, I think this is the one to choose. And I thought of something corny, so SCHD, you could have think of should a uh, bought some more when I could have. <laughs> I wish I you know had more of this, but I will be adding a lot more to this fund in the future. And uh, let me know what you guys think of this fund. I know a lot of people do hold this fund, and it's done very well for me. Every time, you know, quarterly when I get those dividends, it's a very welcome sight. And so I just think this is me providing a diverse and safe way to provide myself dividends because other companies, you look at AT&T, they just cut their dividend in half, um, but they also haven't been performing well in the last five years. So it's been kind of a dud for me. I am holding on to it because I want to see what happens after this Warner Bros. Media Discovery spinoff company uh, and hopefully not be able to sell at a loss. I might sell out of it someday. But regardless, it just shows you that a lot of the companies, you just never know what's going to happen. Where this one, you know, you're holding 105 dividend paying companies that are outperforming their peers and, you know, somebody else is doing it for you. They're managing it. They're reallocating it. They're doing all that stuff. And so I think it's a very smart move. Don't let people, you know, make you feel bad for choosing an ETF because most people that choose individual companies do not outperform ETFs, especially the S&P 500 ETFs and the SCHD. And so I think it's a way to save time. I think it's a way to save money because most people can't individually pick stocks that outperform indexes or certain ETFs. Uh, so I just think it's a very good one to consider. I hold it. Um, I forget how much it is of my portfolio, but I guarantee you it's probably about 6% of my portfolio around that range. And so I want to add heavily to this in the next couple months. I want to bring it up to maybe closer to 10% of my portfolio um, because I've seen with a lot of my stocks, uh, like Tattoo Chef has gone down, AT&T, Vici, even though that one I know will turn around. I just have confidence in it. Um, other ones, you know, they're performing less than their peers. So it's it's definitely, uh, there's no rhyme or reason to picking companies other than doing your best looking at fundamentals and stuff. But even then, uh, you know, there might be, there always probably will be a company better out there. But if you have a company uh, like Schwab, this SCHD fund is held with, they have, you know, People constantly looking at this, doing comparisons. You know, they have a lot of tools. So anyways, there's my rant. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do so. It's free. It's good to get another opinion, follow someone else's performance of their portfolio, see what their holdings are, what their strategies are. So it's really good. So please subscribe. Let me know what you think of this fund. Do you hold it? Do you like it? Do you not like it? Do you like to hold individual companies instead? Or do you go all in an ETFs or do a mix? I do a mix. And I just would like to hear your guys' feedback. I really like this fund. I think it's one that you can just set it, forget it until retirement, really. And then it'll provide you some good um, income in the form of dividends. So have a great day. We'll see you next time on Marks Finance and Fitness.